Two massive fires happening on Sunday on opposite ends of the world. And one involved lithium ion batteries, the other involved something else. Sunday afternoon, a significant fire broke out at a facility manufacturing lithium ion batteries, this time at CATL's Z plant in Ningda Province, China. The fire started around 11.30 a.m. local time, and it wasn't under control until about 10.30 p.m. We're talking about 160,000 square feet. That's a massive facility. What's wild is the news even made its way out of China, because a lot of times disasters like this, especially in China, never make the news. But let's look at things a little bit deeper. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Blazestack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. First off, CATL isn't just some small player. They produce over 35% of the global market share of lithium ion batteries. Thankfully, there are no injuries and the impact on their overall production is reported to be relatively small. But let's face it, this is China. We absolutely believe everything that's coming out of that country. But when you have a fire that intense with the flames going through the roof, it's gonna result in some serious damage to the building. I can already picture the cleanup efforts and, and trust me, it's gonna be a long process. Just a short few months ago, there was a tragic fire that killed 23 employees at a Korean battery manufacturing facility. So while CATL may have avoided injuries at this time, it's a reminder that lithium ion battery manufacturing, the, the incidents can be incredibly dangerous. Now I know what some of you are thinking and I hear it all the time in the comments. Why do you only talk about lithium ion battery related fires? Well, for starters, it's my area of expertise, and these events highlight some critical issues around battery safety. But it's a perfect moment to pivot to another incident that's going on right now, and actually happened the same time as this Korean battery fire. Let's talk about the Biolab chemical plant fire that started in Georgia. This fire started right around Sunday morning, about 5 a.m., pretty early in the morning, and it's affecting nearly 100,000 people. This plant manufactures chemicals used in pools and spas chemicals that are used to treat water. And unfortunately, these chemicals are highly water reactive. But for some reason, when that fire broke out in the building, the sprinkler system activated. Why in the world would anyone install a water-based suppression system in a facility dealing with water reactive chemicals? I just, I, I don't understand the, the logic there. You might be wondering, why if this chemical is water reactive, is the fire department putting water on the building? It's just the unfortunate reality of dealing with a fire of this magnitude. There's only one way to put this fire out, and that's to put water on the building, to extinguish the structure itself. This actually ties nicely into a lot of comments I get on this channel. When I talk about electric vehicles and applying water to that type of vehicle fire, Lithium ion batteries, if they get wet, they're not water reactive in the sense that it's lithium metal inside of there. There's no lithium metal inside of a lithium ion battery. This case here, this chemical plant fire, this is truly a water reactive chemical that when reacting with the water causes major issues. It's also extremely unfortunate that this is the third massive fire that this company has had. The first one that I'm aware of is back in 2004. And then they had another one just four years ago, back in 2020. The environmental impact is huge. And when you look at some of these pictures, it's just incredible. Smoke should not be this color. Residents across a massively large area are reporting a strong odor of chlorine in the air. The EPA is monitoring for chlorine and other related compounds in the area. So far, they say levels are unlikely to cause harm to most people. But having nearly 100,000 people affected is a pretty big deal. On top of all this, even though they have the fire out, there's quite the plume coming off that building because the chemicals inside are still reacting with water. These two incidents both happened on Sunday, opposite ends of the world. They bring up important safety concerns. Whether we're talking about lithium ion batteries or chemical plants, fires in these types of facilities pose unique challenges. And it's important that we pay attention to how they're managed, how they're prepared for, and what we can learn from them. If you're interested in learning more about these types of incidents, or if you have any thoughts, drop them in the comments.